Hi, it's Leah Morrigan, the perfect lady, coming to you from Toronto where the trees are pollinating. And I have to apologize because I'm a little nasal and I have scratchy eyes. I'm having a reaction. So I just wanted to apologize that uh, for that first before I begin. Um, today I'm talking about a fine fictional gentleman by the name of Robert Crawley, who you may know as Lord Grantham from the very popular television series Downton Abbey. Um, for those who don't know, uh, he is the Earl of Grantham, uh, takes care, he's the, um, uh, he's the man that takes, lives in and takes care of Downton Abbey, the house itself. He's very loyal to Downton. He takes care of all of its inhabitants, including, including his, uh, his family, which are made, which is made up of very strong and very, in, uh, distinctive female characters, along with the servants in his house that he's also very loyal to. So he is a good man. He is, uh, he's got one foot in the old world where everything is precisely where it should be and everyone looks precisely as they should and everything is very orderly and the social hierarchy is very much intact. But as, as, the, as the series continues, that social order, uh, sort of crumbles and breaks down over the season. So what we're talking about today is what's happening in season two. So season two begins in 1916 and we are smack dab in the middle of World War I. At the house at Downton Abbey, everyone in the house is displaced. Some people are fighting the war, some people have been killed in the war, uh, people are stepping up for their war efforts. Everyone is, uh, the house is now a convalescent home for uh, recovering officers. All kinds of things are going on. And Robert, who is, who had fought in the Boer War, has been given an ornamental position in the British Army for World War I, and he's not very happy about that. So he's kind of, he's there to keep everyone's hopes up, which is important, but it's not exactly what he was hoping for. So I think that this has bruised his ego and he's not feeling confident. Uh, and uh, his character is very, uh, I, I see his character as very complex. And this is one of the elements of the complexity of, of his character, which happens during the second season. So as the season continues, he is getting more and more irritable. He, there's, everything has changed. He's not used to what's happening. He, his house is in an upheaval. Everything is different. There's no one around for him to talk to, so I think that there is sort of a, there's an emotional vacancy there in the house for Robert. Um, but luckily, or unluckily, depending on your perspective, the new housemaid, Jane, comes along and she kind of acts as his emotional confidant during the season. Uh, he, uh, he has all kind of fairly regular conversations with him. He hopes for little clandestine meetings or accidental meetings to see her and talk to her um, until one day he finds himself in the crockery cupboard with Jane and plants a kiss on him, which I wasn't expecting. You may have been as shocked as I was. And then things sort of start happening from there. Now, during the season, the war ends, but as I said, nothing is, nothing is ever going to be the same. Everything is different at Downton, and he has to get used to it or perish along with the old ways that are not going to move into the future. So one night, uh, there are guests at Downton, and several of them take ill with the Spanish flu, including his wife, Cora, who, has, who he's been bickering with and who has been uh, neglecting him. He invites Jane up to his bedchambers, hmm. and they share a very passionate kiss. And who knows how far things would have gone had they not been interrupted by Lord Grantham's valet, Valet. Uh, at that moment, he realizes this is an impossible situation that, that cannot be reconciled. Uh, not only is there a massive difference in class, there's also his house and his family and all kinds of things that he needs to deal with. Uh, so this is where he finds his gentleman, I think. His true gentleman comes out again because I think his true gentleman was absent for a while during the season where he's all of these things that are, are going on in, uh, in, his, uh, in his life that are not the same as they used to be. So I think it's through his dalliance with Jane that really, he really shows his true gentlemanly nature. 
he has got, he says to Jane um, that he wants her with every fiber of his being, but he tears himself away. So he's got a strong sense of, of self-restraint and also a strong sense of responsibility because he realizes that if he goes through with whatever he was going to go through with, he realizes all the people that he would hurt. He realizes that the house could crumble and all of its, all of the people associated with the house could go down just with the single act. But he realizes his folly and he makes things better. Eventually Jane resigns and <clears throat> she leaves Downton, but <clears throat> through his sort of final act of, of, of uh, chivalry, I suppose, he makes arrangements to find Jane work so that she can move into the future and bring her son up uh, so he has a better future. So he's done this, so that's wonderful. And he's, he has a, a, a very strong sense of loyalty to the house, as I've said. He never fails to protect, and, to protect and provide for his family and everybody associated with the house. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, he's got that strong loyalty to everyone and he never lets go of it. And through, through, his, re through his realization that this isn't going to work, he realizes that he, it's his responsibility to move Downton into the future, into its next act. And so his true gentleman comes out and carries on for the rest of the season and that's lovely so lord grantham if you're watching this we commend you we know that kisses happen and it's okay because it, really there was no harm done and you you came through and you took care of everyone and that's why we appreciate you <laughs>